Hey everyone, I'm Molly from Bell Farms. So today is a day of the forestry mulcher and getting seed cutting equipment out. Uh, we're gonna go pick up that forestry mulcher this morning. Um, and then when we get back to the farm, I'm sure Shane's gonna wanna play with it. So we will go do that. Uh, I'll show you guys a little bit about what we're gonna get out for seed cutting. Uh, I think Dave's gonna unload some seed and we'll just go over a couple things for preparation for seed cutting. Very cool. Take that there. That's a widow maker. Yep. <laughs> nice. Thank you, All right. Loaded up, ready to go. All right, so we're gonna head back to Auburn now. All right, guys, I'll see you when we get there. Hey guys, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Dan Hathaway. So I just a box just arrived here and a really nice handwritten letter. And uh, somebody who used to be in the business, who is now out of the business, sent us um, some alligator lacing tools and some extra parts they had that they're not using anymore. So super cool. I mean, I don't know if you guys remember how Shane stressed how important it was not to lose one of these. <laughs> so now it looks like we have uh, a little bit of a backup and spare. So this oh, is... I should be able to put mine next to those. So now you can do... It'll go three times as fast. You were talking about that. So now there you go. There's the answer. So oh. you don't have to do as many or you don't have to move it as much. That was awesome. Really, really cool. Thank you very, very much. That was very thoughtful. This was a heavy box too, so I know it wasn't cheap to send, but wow. Oh, awesome. So cool. Thank you very much, Dan. Yeah, thank you, it's awesome. Cool. Awesome. Yep, so we got some extra lacing in the box and the special tools, extra parts. Yeah, can't thank you enough. Thank you, Dan, very much. We appreciate it a lot. That's like, you cut a tree with that thing. Yeah. Yeah, so if you're cutting trees, you go on this side because it spins this way. Yeah. So it kind of pushes them out. And then once you right. tip it down, so if you look inside, there's teeth yes. mounted up in here too. Well, on here as well. So it chips everything up. So oh, as it gets shoved in, in underneath this, right? Yeah, so oh, look at that. It pulls everything in that side and then it fucking spits it out this way. So this is hinged? Yeah. Yeah, pretty rugged little hinge ah, there. Bridge. And then there's the teeth on the bottom, so you grind everything right up. You definitely need a cab for this thing. Yeah. You can't do this without a cab. If you start bending this, you're, you're pushing too hard or you probably spin out anyway. Yeah, so this is the new toy we get to play with. Uh, Shane is very excited about using this. Uh, you know, as the years go on, you clean around your fields, you do field maintenance, but everything just comes back. <laughs> And there's a lot of little alders and stuff and you slowly start to lose part of your field and it becomes shaded because everything just kind of creeps in. So this is going to be used to help clean around the field. So this thing can cut trees down and mulch them. Um, I'm excited to see how this works. We've watched lots of videos on YouTube about them, but we will see firsthand, hopefully in the next couple days. So what we're doing here is we're cleaning up in the cooler. Uh, we've got everything cleaned out of there, except for a couple pallets of potatoes. We'll probably move those. Uh, Shane's cleaned the floor once already. We're gonna clean it again. And we are going to spray uh, down disinfectant. And this is where we're gonna move all of the seed into um, so that when we start cutting seed in the next, I don't know, few days to a week, something like that, everything will be right there ready. And we'll line up, um, this is going to be like the seed cutting area right here. So we'll have 
All right, well, the skid steer's in the way, but we're going to have the equipment lined up here, and then we cut the seed, the seed gets treated, and then it gets loaded into the uh, bulk body trucks, and that's how we transport it to the locations where we're going to start planting. So the trucks will be outside, and the seed treatment portion will be outside, and that way the inside stays clean. That's what we're working on today. So I am driving down to one of the field edges here in Auburn where we have uh, the farm facility. Jane is down here trying out that mulcher. So I'm gonna see what he thinks of that. We're gonna get a look at that thing. Okay, not gonna get too close. Let's check this thing out. All right, so what do you think? I think that thing's awesome. It's uh, still a little scary to operate, but I think once I get the hang of it, it definitely uh, chews stuff up and will help clear it up around the fields nicely. Yeah, cool. Well, be careful. And uh, I guess we'll go back in the packing house. Yeah, I'll head back up there in a second too. I okay. just want to try it out. Yep, cool. All right, so four minute professional opinion there. <laughs> So it's supposed to rain here for the next couple days. And this is just a really light rain. I can barely even tell it's raining. But what we're gonna do is after the rain stops, hopefully Monday, I will be in the tractor. I've said this for the last like few videos, hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> I really hope that I can get in the tractor soon. So I did put a new radio in the tractor. I didn't show you guys that, but I uh, took the headliner out and put some new speakers and a radio in there because the one that was in there was not very good and I wasn't able to hook up my phone to it. So uh, now I got some good tunes so that I can cruise around, listen to some good music and work all day. I'm anticipating that we're gonna have to do 12 hour days once we actually get started, at least 12 hour days uh, to get to get the fields ready and get ready to plant, which is fine with me. I totally don't mind. Um, I love doing tractor work and none of us are afraid of work, so we will get it done. All right, back to the packing house. Okay, so we're gonna get some of this equipment out finally. So we have the trailer backed up in the cooler. So we will open that door up. So I don't know if you guys do this too, but we use uh, trailers for storage. Uh, it's a nice easy way to load stuff in and out right at the docks and um, yeah, just works out well for us. Also made by Haynes Equipment and Press Kyle. All right, now we're gonna pull out the seed cutter. Can I help you? Yeah, I'd hold up here if you can. Huh? Can you hold up here? Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to move the forklift out of the way? I mean, it's gonna be in the way. Okay.
right. So I'm just gonna block up the wheels here. All right, so this is the hopper that we have been using for the chefs. It's touching. So I'm gonna try and explain this and Shane's gonna correct me if I'm wrong, but we're gonna start here. So you guys have seen this hopper. This is what we use to uh, bag the chefs and to dump the uh, pallet boxes into and hang the tote bags over. So this is the hopper and the hopper will feed this conveyor which goes into the seed cutter. So from what I understand, the hopper speed is important to match this because all of the seed is getting pushed through this and there's a rate of yes. a application at the other end, so everything's gotta be timed right. Yeah, if you try and go too fast, then the potatoes are gonna bounce out on okay. the floor and stuff. Then if you go too slow, then your seed treatment's not gonna be proper. Okay, So. all right, so from here, full potatoes come in up over this part here. And these are star rollers. So basically the spacing in between these determines on whether or not a potato is gonna fall through it. So these first sections here, these are closer together. So these potatoes that fall through this roller, uh, they won't need to be cut. So those will be our like little bee potatoes. So, and then from this section here, there is a funnel shape underneath here. So any of the potatoes that fall through these rollers here will get cut in half. So there's one knife underneath the funnel where these potatoes go. And then as you move down here, this section through here is all potatoes that will be cut into three different pieces. So if a potato makes it all the way to this part here, what happens down here? They they get cut into multiple different pieces over here, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Those are the ones that they fall down onto these round roller things to space the potatoes out. Okay. And then that brings the potatoes around to the end. And these are knives right here. So these are, well, all cut potatoes there. Yeah, that, you know, you can see the two rollers. So the potatoes get squished in between those two rollers there and then get cut on the knife. Okay. And then, so this belt here is the whole length of the seed cutter. So the bees fall through, um, then all the pieces from the cut in half potatoes and then the three cuts and then down to this multi-cut here. So it brings all the cut pieces here. Uh, these. Round rollers here are the ones that eliminate any of the slivers that are too small to be used as seed. So those will fall down and they will go out of the way. And then if you turn around, um, this is where they will, the next piece of this is into this auger area here. So this is where the seed will get its treatment. And the best way to describe this is uh, when we actually have potatoes going through it, <laughs> we'll show you guys how this works. I think you covered the basics now. Uh later on when there's potatoes going through it, it will be much easier to see what you're saying. Yeah, so that's the basic uh, mechanics of how this seed cutter works. Seed cutting, the teaser trailer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this equipment here um, is made by Haynes of New York. So we've got the red potato equipment that's made by Haynes of Presque Isle. And then we have the blue and red, that's Haynes of New York. So uh, specialized potato equipment. So yep, so just a quick rundown on the seed cutting equipment here. And uh, next time you guys see this, it will be in action with potatoes going through it. How far are we out from uh, cutting seed? As soon as it stops raining. Yeah, pretty much. So what we have is our potato beds made already. We did that in the fall. Yeah. So 
we're planning on rehilling. Yeah, we're well, we're gonna put down a little bit of dry fertilizer okay. and gypsum before we rehill because everything got pretty well Flooded. washed out with all the rain. Yeah. Okay. So it's important to have that seed bed uniform for when he goes in planting. Okay. So a couple steps before the seed will go in the ground still, but um, those are kind of like following the rows that have already been made. So I know, I think I talked about it in some previous videos about Shane uh, making the potato, potato beds. We did that in the fall. Well, I guess that will wrap it up for this video. Just a little update on preparation for seed and our new forestry mulcher. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you for watching.